everyone, everyone online as well. This song is saying something that maybe if you're here for the first time, when you're talking about picking up a cross, I'll follow you, what's that all about? And what, the, what that song's really about is that many of us want a new life, but we don't want to die to the old life, the old habits. I want different results, but I've learned this. There is no resurrection. There's nothing new until you're willing to die to the old. So when we're saying, I'm willing to follow, that means I'm willing to die. There's some habits that can die today. Anger needs to die. Addiction needs to die. Doing it our way needs to die. Because if we don't, like, die to that, you can't expect a better life. This is what we want. Change. And we're saying, change them, change my circumstance, but don't change me. And the reality is what you're going through, the things that you really don't like in your life, in your family, in your relationships, sometimes in your money, they're a result, even in your body, they're a result of the things that you've been doing that need to die so God could give you a new life. So when I say, here I am, I'll follow you, I pick up my cross, this is what, I, this is what I'm doing every day. I'm dying to my will so I can see God's results in my life. God, I need, to, I need to die to my attitudes. I need to die to my thinking. I need to die to my selfishness. I need to die to this addiction. I need to die to the lust. I need to die to the anger. I need to die to the violence. I need to die to the hustle. I need to die to the manipulation so I can have a new life. Does anybody want a new life? Okay, how many want a new life, new beginnings? It's beautiful, but then there has to be a death. Today could be your day. He said, what happened at church today? I died. Are you serious? How'd they get you back to like mouth to mouth? We're not talking about that kind of death. We're talking about death to your old life. Come on. You know, Jesus specializes in giving new life. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. What he's saying is, you want a new life? Come to me. You want new joy? Come on. New joy? Come to me. You want to be set free? Come to me. Come on. You want me to restore your life and your family? Come to me. I specialize in broken down lives, broken down families, broken down minds, broken down bodies. Let's give a God. Come on. Let's give Jesus a praise, the answer to our problem. We are getting, we are serious about life transformation because that's what Jesus does. His standards are high, but his Holy Spirit is powerful. What I mean by that is, you may think, man, I can't live this. You can't live this without God. But the miracle is that your life is transformed by the power of God's Spirit. This isn't about you being glorified. It's not about you being self-made. It's about God taking down, come on, taking a broken life and restoring it and saying, this is what I can do with a life that surrenders to me. One more big praise to Jesus Christ, the only name above every name. Father, we, let's, I'm going to pray. Father, speak to us today. Holy Spirit, speak to me through me today. That it will not be my words, but your words in these next few moments. That as we hear this word, this word will be understood. And then there'll be a conviction like, man, I need to act this out. That we'll not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. And then we'll see the results of your word. I thank you, Lord. We're going to hear it. We're going to do it. Results. Hear it, do it, results. Hear it, do it, results. Hearing it, not doing it, no results. Hear it, do it, results. I thank you, Lord, that today we're committing to die to our old ways to start getting your results in our life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Awesome. So glad to see every one of you here right now. We got a full house uh, in, our, in our discipleship classes, Holy Words 1 and Holy Words 2. We're so full that we have to close the doors for people to come in. It's overflowing. This is the assignment that God has given us to make disciples of Jesus Christ. It's the mission that God has given the whole church. It's the mission that God has given his believers. That we would follow Jesus 
and then eventually produce followers of Jesus Christ. This shouldn't be one generational thing. It should be multi-generational. I'm learning, I'm following, and I'm passing it on to the next generation. This is what I've learned about life. You're going to pass on your lifestyle to the next generation, whether it's good or bad. We might as well be able to pass on a, a, a lifestyle, a lifestyle that God has called us to live. And in that lifestyle, there's victory. In that lifestyle, there's fulfillment. In that lifestyle, when it's all said and done, you'll stand before God and God will say, well done, good and faithful servant. You could go through life and waste your life away, or you could go through life, find your purpose, and invest. So today I want to dive into a subject, and this is, God woke me up the other night, and he gave me three words, and they were all the same three words. And these were the three words, go, go, go. Say with me. Go, go, go. One more time. Go, go, go. Now that's a powerful word, go. The word go, when it, this is what it means. It means to move or proceed toward a destination or a goal. It means to act as instructed or specified. So when God says go, he goes, what I want you to do is act in agreement to what I've instructed and specified for you to do. To follow also means to follow one and become his adherent or disciple. It means to depart and go on a journey or a mission. Now, when God says go, and we're going to discuss today three times that Jesus said go in Scripture. Now, when he says go, there's two options. We can go and do what he's calling us to go forth with or... We cannot go. But those that go are going to see God's power. They're going to see God's results. They're going to see God use them when they submit or they say, send me, I will. Is there anybody that's willing to go when God sends you, sends you to go? There was a young lady that went. It was a long time ago. It was over 50-something years ago. There was a little young girl from Mexico that went to the Virgin Islands, from Mexico to the Virgin Islands. She was a single young lady, and God told her to go and tell people about me. And she decided to go. That means that she had to somehow get a passport to go 50 years ago. She had to leave Mexico and go to an island called the Virgin Islands in St. Croix. And go to a place that she didn't know the people by herself and fulfill the assignment that God gave her. Well, I want you, this is my mother right here. And that young lady from Mexico met my mother in the Virgin Islands. And what she did was she knocked on my mother's door by herself in a foreign country, in a foreign land. And most of the people in the Virgin Islands speak English. She knocks on a door. My mother at 22, 23 years old answers the door. And the the girl, the little Mexican girl was very short. And my mom was short, but she was shorter than her. And that young lady told my mother, she says, I am preaching at a church tonight on this island. And I would love for you to come and hear my story of what Jesus has done for me. As she went, my, my, my mom was so interested in hearing this young lady that came all the way from Mexico. She wanted to say, this girl is going to teach. This girl's going to preach. I have to see this. So my mom did not go because she wanted to hear about Jesus. She was just inquisitive Someone gave her an invitation, she accepted the invitation, and she went to just see. But after she heard this young lady speak, the lady sang a song, and it was a, just a simple song according to Scripture. And this was the song the lady sang. Will you, will you tell me where you are? These are the words. Will you tell me where you are standing? Are you standing on the sand or are you standing on the rock? 
It's coming like this. Will you tell? I can't even sing it. I ain't going to try it. It's in my head. I'm going to have to practice for next service. But my mother knew that she wasn't standing on stable ground. Because those that stand on stable ground are the ones that hear Jesus' sayings and they do them. You can live a life doing it your way, but I do know this. When the pressures of life come, your life's going to fall apart. If you're in this room and your life has fallen apart, I got good news for you. You can rebuild your life on a solid foundation this time by living your life and building your life on the Word of God. Well, that young lady went to Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands area. My mother that day gave her life to Jesus, became a disciple of Jesus Christ. Years later, I was born, and my mother made a commitment that I'm going to raise you. There, there's me right there. There's my mama. Look at little Marco right there. He is cute. But that's me, my little horsey. I don't even remember that horsey. But God already had a plan for my life. But if it wasn't for a young lady in Mexico that decided to get on a plane and go to a foreign country and overcome every single fear, my mom would have never been saved and raised me to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And because of that decision that a young lady decided to go, we now are going all over the world letting people know about Jesus Christ. Go. Jesus commands us to go. I'm going to give you three instances that he says go. Number one, he says go and make disciples. And that's called the mission. Say with me, the mission. In Matthew 20 and 19, therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. This is what God is saying. I want you as believers to go. And with a mission to make disciples. Let's cover that word disciples again. And it means a personal follower of Jesus Christ. So I want you to go and make personal followers of Jesus Christ. This is the key. You cannot make personal followers of Jesus Christ unless you become person, a personal follower of Jesus Christ. You cannot, you cannot make students if you're not first a student. A disciple also means a disciple is one who learns. Is one who what? Obeys and teaches others the commands of Christ. So they learn they obey and they teach. They le oh, disciples learn, they what? Obey and teach. The main objective of, the, of a disciple of Jesus Christ is to be like Christ. In thought, in talk, in walk, in character, and mission. This is very important. The mission of a disciple, the objective of a disciple is to be like Christ. In thought, in walk, in talk, in character, and in mission. I want to be like Christ. The idea when you're in this room and everybody in this room, you're either like Christ or you're not. But whoever you are like and whoever you're emulating, this is what you're going to do. You're going to become like, and this is the next step, you're going to produce like. You will produce who you are. If you're gangbanging, you're going to produce gangbanging. If you're angry, you're going to produce anger. If you're loving, you're going to produce loving people. If you're godly, you're going to produce godliness. If you don't like what you're producing, look yourself in the mirror. Don't blame anybody. But I got good news. Even if you don't like what you've produced, you can start over today and say, I'm tired of emulating the wrong mindset, the wrong talk, the wrong people. I made a decision. I'm done doing me, and I want to become like Jesus because I want to start getting Jesus results. Come on, if that's you, just give a clap. Say, I'm in agreement with that. 
This is the idea is that d- disciples of Jesus Christ make disciples of Jesus Christ. The end result of following Jesus is you reproduce disciples. The fact is we will produce who we are, good or bad. So how do we become a strong disciple of Jesus Christ? The first thing is making the decision, accept the call to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have to get to the point, we have to get to the point that we repent. That means we turn away of the way we've been living. No change happens until we finally make a decision. I'm tired of living the way I've been living. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, set me free. I'm tired of following the drugs. I'm tired of following the drug dealing. I'm tired of following the women. I'm tired of following the men. I'm tired of following the gambling. I'm tired of following my insecurity. I'm tired of following my unworthiness. I'm tired of following the rejection. I'm tired of following the abuse. Something has to change today. I'm choosing to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and follow Jesus. Say with me, I'm a disciple of Jesus. The next step, get baptized right away. This is your first act of obedience after you decide to follow Jesus. We're keeping our bet. Don't worry about that. It's just the devil. (laughs) Devil just fell down in the back. That's all that happened. He said, oh my, let's stop this. But we're going to keep our baptismal warm. That means if you give your life to Jesus, you can get baptized at 11 o'clock service today. We're going to make sure that you get baptized. After you give your life to Jesus, baptism represents that your old life is dead. We bury you in the water. When you come out of the water, it represents I'm no longer that person. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. And I want everybody to know. How do I become a, how do I become and be a strong disciple of Jesus Christ? Get baptized right away. Enroll and follow through with our discipleship journey. Right now, Holy Wars 1 and 2 are moving ahead. We got, both classes are full with people that have made a decision. I am now a student. I am enrolled in class and I am renewing my mind and I'm learning how to think like Christ, live like Christ, be filled with the Spirit of Christ. Now it's time for me to learn the Word of God and start getting different results. See, you were disciples of somebody. I remember when I was in junior high, I wanted to be a gang member. Why? Because in my hood, everybody that seemed cool was a cholo. I remember going to the to swamp me. And I wanted to get the big pants. But you had to you had to iron those pants. I didn't know how to iron pants. And I told my mom, I go, Mom, let's go to swamp me. Colton swapped me. You get some oversized pants and you got to have some pleats. And my mom wasn't good at making those pleats either. And then I got me a little, I got me a little belt with my initials G for Garcia. Y que vato. I started talking like them. Orale pues, y que vato, sur fontana, rifamos. I just started learning language. I was cool till I ran into a real gangster. The play was over. He goes, where are you from? I go, well, uh, Fontana, uh, uh, down the street. Uh, uh, uh. I remember I went to Thrifty's and got me some chanclas. They're like corduroy chanclas. You remember, remember those? I don't even know how you'd fight in those things. Every, I, every time I was walking, they'd just fall off. But this was the idea. I was trying to be somebody. I wasn't called to be a gangster. I was not called to be a drug dealer. I was not called to be prideful. I was called from the beginning of time to be a man of God. And I'll tell you this, living for God is the most down manly thing or womanly thing you could ever do. It takes a man, come on, to be a man of God. It takes a man to raise a godly family. It takes a man to be a husband. It takes a man to be an example. Is there anybody here that made up their mind? I want to be a a real man. A woman. 
So what do we do? We enroll. And then what do we do after that? We join a discipleship group. Discipleship small group, and we meet on a weekly basis. You know what that's called? Mentoring and accountability. We want to grow, but we don't want any accountability. You're not going to grow. Any area that you want to grow in, you need some mentorship and accountability. Unless you can submit to accountability and mentorship, you're going to stay at the same exact place you are. And I'll tell you why. The thoughts that you have are the only thoughts you'll always have because you're not exposed to greater thinking and accountability. You make commitments, you need someone to make sure and hold you to the fire in those commitments. I got a disciple that I just, I just started making. I told you last week, Brett. Brett just gave his life to her. I met him in Palm Springs. He's the owner of a design company. And while I'm off work, when I mean I'm not here, I'm still on work. Because Jesus called me to go and make disciples. Everywhere I go, I make disciples. I give an opportunity for someone to know Jesus. I began to share Jesus with Brett. And Brett on the showroom floor, after an hour of speaking, gave his life to Jesus. The Spirit of God hit him. And I told him, Brett, your next step, you want to be, be a disciple? You got to get baptized, homie. Now I'm a gangster, Christian gangster. He goes, oh, I'm ready. He goes, when? I go, this next Sunday. So he got saved on Friday. Next Sunday, two days later, he was here. I've been texting him all week. He showed up at my discipleship group during the week. He showed up, got saved Friday, got baptized Sunday, showed up to a discipleship group uh, on, on Wednesday. Today, I text him last night, I text him this morning. I go, Brett, I'm so excited about your next step on this journey. Holy Warriors won. You know where he got that message? He's over, he's over at Disneyland with his family. He showed up here at 8.30 in the morning. He left his family at Disneyland. He goes, I made a commitment to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm here. Let's do this. Come on. We're talking about, could it be, come on, stop waiting. And could it be, could it be this, that someone that just started has more drive than you? You've been doing this 10 years, and you look at the commands of Christ like they're an option or a suggestion or just some advice. When he says go, it's not a, come on, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a suggestion, it's a command. Go! Do what I told you to do so you can start getting the results that I've wanted for you. I just rap right there. Do what I tell you to do so you can get the results I've had for you. Stop blaming God for the mess you created. Attend church on a weekly basis. Do some daily devotions. Learn the word, obey the word, teach the word, serve. These are all things. If you do this, you're going to be a great disciple. But not only this, you will start producing disciples of Jesus Christ. We cannot produce all in people when we're half-hearted followers. How many want to start producing some all-in, radical believers? Amen. So go and make what? The second go. Go and preach the good news. So the go and make disciples is the mission. The go and preach the good news is the message. Right now, let's read the scripture and I'll tell you what's going, happening right now. In Mark 16, 15, and 20, and then he told them. Who told them? Jesus told them. Another go. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. And anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes and, with safety. And if they drink any poisonous, po anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Now. Say, so Pastor, what's all this snake stuff and all that? This is what it means. Then when you take the assignment of preaching the good news, this message of Jesus Christ, power will follow you. What it means that if you drink anything poisonous, what that means is that if anybody has is trying to poison you, it won't work. What it means that you'll be able to handle snakes. We're not going to bring snakes to church so you can handle snakes to prove you're a Christian. 
But we're talking about snakes are sometimes looked at, actually in scripture, are, are identified as demons. What he's saying, whatever demons come, any snakes that try to come into your life, demonic attacks of the enemy, they will not prosper. No weapon against you shall prosper. He goes, I'll give you power over demons, and I'll even give you power over sickness. All I need for you to do is carry my message. Right now, as we speak, we got a team that when God said, go into all the nations, we got a team in Africa that's going. And this week, I'm, we're not doing a year in review. We're talking a week in review. Right now, we got a team right now that's in Africa. They, we just went to Africa. We're helping prostitutes get off the streets. We're not just leading them to Jesus. We're making disciples of Jesus Christ, and now we have a women's home that we just acquired. Let's see our women's home. Let's look at that. This is our women's home in Kenya. Take a look at that. We just got that house. Right now, there's some prostitutes. Right now, as we're speaking, they're leaving the streets, and they're going to be in the most beautiful house they've ever been in because there's a ministry that's going with the good news of Jesus Christ and the mission to make disciples. We're going. In Kenya, we have a team out there that went on the streets. They are on the streets. Let's see the street ministry real quick. They went out there. They're preaching on the streets. They're rapping on the streets. You know who I sent out there? Sam went out there. Sam ra raps like a machine. Like they'd never heard of it. Be saying words. Like, I could just do that, but, but that's not words. He says words. So they had some rappers from Kenya, and then all of a sudden, Sam came on the streets, and when Sam started rapping, the crowd just started coming around them. They went out there. They went out. There were skaters. They went out there with a dance team. They went out there with some music. And then this is a meeting that they had that night. And look at all these young adults that showed up to hear the good news of Jesus Christ because someone was willing to go. Prostitutes are being delivered off the streets. Someone's giving their life to Jesus because there was a person that was willing to go. Because we went, there's now a women's home. Because we went. There's a ministry that's delivering and rescuing prostitutes off the street. Because we went, there's an orphanage in Kenya taking care of little boys and little girls. Because we went, last year we built a physical church. Now all these people, this Sunday, today, they're coming to church for the first time. A church that we built because God sent us and we went. Because we went, we built two businesses over there. One for the orphanages so, so they could actually start raising money so they could become self-sufficient. We also started a new business, a washing machine business, where the prostitutes would come in and they started a business. Now they could be self-sufficient sufficient now we have a home because we went and God is saying if you'll just go with my message and just go 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 I'll show 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 this team today this week we had our our Compton teams Compton straight up Compton straight out of Compton we had our Compton team that went and this is what we asked the mayor what's the toughest hood you got. That's where we want to start this ministry. So they found the toughest hood, and then the, they started knocking on the doors on the toughest hood, and then they asked a question, what's the worst house here? So we don't want to start up just in the right hood, the worst hood. We want to start with the worst house. They go, it's that house on the corner. They have drive-bys all the time. Matter of fact, they just had a shooting this week. Let's go check them out. So we showed up. We had our first Bible study on that street. And the young man that was in that home is a career gangbanger, second, third generational gangbanger. He gave his life to Jesus. They prayed with him. Today, come on, the guy that the guy that got shot that they're after has now given his life to Jesus because someone went. Something's happening. See, the only way someone can be saved is by hearing this good news message. This message has the full power of God to save and transform souls for eternity. 
There's no other message that you could preach but the good news to save a soul. In Romans 1.16, it says, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It's about Christ. It's how Christ saves. It's how Christ paid the price. It's how Christ resurrected. It's how Christ loves us. We're not given religion, which is rules. We are given power and relationship, which is Christ. The good news message, if you're talking about all kinds of things and not talking about Christ, you ain't, you, your message has no power to save anybody. We have to know the good news message because it has the power to save. And it says, this good news message about Christ, it is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. So the good news shows us, what is the good news message? It shows us how God saves us from judgment through faith in Jesus and not through our own good works. So the, the good news shows us how we're saved through faith in Jesus, not our own good works. Now it's important for you to know that because if you're here in this room and you think you're going to go to heaven because you earned it, because you were good enough, you're not going to heaven. You could only be saved by faith, not works. God does not grade on the curve. What I mean by that is he's not going to grade you based on how well you perform, based on your neighborhood and, and the city you come from. This is the reality. The judgment for sin is death. If you sin once, this is the judgment over your life. You'll be eternally separated from God forever. Sin brings about a death sentence. And you cannot overrule or overturn that judgment based on your well behavior. I think you should let me in, God, because look at the good works I've done. He goes, you'll never be saved looking at yourself as your savior. It's not what you've done. It's what he's done. I didn't save me. He saved me. Religion tries to get you to save yourself. Jesus is saying, I know you can't save yourself. You're crazy. You can't even keep a New Year's resolution, much less live the life and the standard I've called you to live. You're going to need, come on, you're going to need a Savior to save you. So what does the good news say? This is what it says. We are saved by our faith in what Jesus has done, not in what we've done. In Romans 5, 1, therefore, since we have been made right in God's side by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus, our Lord, has done. He died for our sins. What is the good news? Say God saved us. We did not save ourselves. And Ephesians 2 eight says, God saved you. God saved you by his grace when you believe. When were you saved? When you put your faith in Jesus. Not religion, not yourself, not your own good works. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. You're saved by grace. Do you know what that means? You can't earn this thing. It's a gift. This is what it says. It says, and you can't take any credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it, brag about it. You cannot save yourself. What does the good news say? We cannot be saved by our own good works. And Titus 3, 5 says, he saved us. He saved me. So if someone asks me, Pastor, right now, if you died, are you going to heaven? I go, I absolutely. Why? Because you're perfect? I go, nah, man, I messed up. But I thank God that God already knew that my efforts will fall short. So he brought Jesus that lived a perfect life, paid the price for every wrong thing I've done, took on my guilt, took on my shame, took on my addiction, took on my past. And he says, son, you can't do this, but if you'll just believe in the sacrifice that I provided for your sins, which is my son, Jesus Christ, I'll give you forgiveness. I'll give you eternal life. I'll set you free and I'll put my spirit in you and make you a new person. I'm the savior. I love it. Titus 3, 5 says, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins. He saved us. He washed away our sins. He given us, he gave us new birth. He gave us new life through the Holy Spirit. He, he, he. Not me, me, me. 
Religion gets you focused on me, me, me. You know what I did? You know what I did? You know what I did? And God says, do you really think that you're going to, do you really think you're going to show me your good works and say, I deserve to go to heaven? Like, you are so good that you deserve to heaven. The truth is you're a sinner. The truth is you're a liar. The truth is you're a hustler. The truth is you get angry. The truth is, come on, the truth is, come on, you got some witchcraft operating in your life. The, come on, you ask your neighbors. The truth is, me and you are sinners. There's nobody here better than nobody. We're in the same boat. You know what we are? Sinners that need a Savior. I just recognize God, I can't change me. God, I can't make me new. God, I can't save me. But I believe that you sent your son to pay the price for all my guilt, all my shame. And your word says, if I call upon his name, I will be So what do we do? We go and make disciples the mission. We go and preach the good news, which is the message. And last thing, we go and invite people, which is the method. Someone said the method. In Luke 14, 23, so his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come. That word urge means to compel, it means to drive, it means to force. It means to necessitate. It's just, this is crazy. He, don't, he says, don't, in, don't just invite them. Invite them with, with I want you to get this, with drive. What do you mean by that is, I'm inviting you. But I'm, I'm also pressing on you to come. So Brett, I didn't give Brett an option to show up today. I texted him last night, and I texted him at 4 o'clock this morning. I go, you're going to come. Because your salvation depends on it. Your eternal life depends on it. Could it be that we're not getting people to come because your invitation is too weak? You almost make it like it's not even really important. It's their eternal life is at stake. So the word invite means to urge. It means to compel or press. Or force. Well, I don't want to force it on my kids. If you don't force this on your kids, the devil will enforce his life on your kids. Someone's going to have to be the enforcer. In my house, everybody comes to church. I don't want to. I'm tired. That's tough luck. As for me and my house, we serve God. I don't want to like, I don't want to like push my faith or my religion on them. Why don't you go tell the devil not to do that? Because he's saying right now, I'm going to force and I'm going to compel them and I'm going to push them. I'm going to push the drugs on them. I'm going to the, push the sex on them. I'm going to push the gang banging on them. I'm going to push the lies on them. I'm going to push the hustle on them. And we as Christians are trying to be, so, I mean, we're trying to be politically correct. It's getting quiet up in here. We must have a lot of politically correct people. My kids serve God because... That's the option I gave them. We don't have no other option. And I'm going to say, you start where you're at right now. Start where you're at. I don't care if your kids are all uh, right now not living for God. It doesn't matter. It's not, it's not how it starts. It's how it finishes. Because right now, come on, God's going to change you. Be willing to go the extra mile. So God, come on, can reach those kids. St this is important. You're never going to start seeing great change until you allow God to greatly change you. There's some adjustments need to be made. Christianity has become too casual. So why don't we go? There's three reasons why we don't go. It's not convenient. So when things aren't convenient, you know what we do? Just make excuses. Second reason we don't go, it's not a priority. There's so many other things that are a priority. You can't go. You can't go to church, can't go to discipleship, can't disciple anybody. It's not a priority for me. My, the, the blessings of God are more important than the mission of God in my life. I got a card of wax. I, I, I right now need to mow my lawn on Sunday and do my laundry. That's the day I do that. And that's the day me and my wife go out to breakfast, you know, just so you know. And we're planning to go on Disneyland and the next Sunday we're planning to go, you know, just on a little rendezvous. 
if you don't prioritize God and just, what I mean by that, you got to block out this time. Sundays are not, after we go to church, we could do whatever we want. But on Sundays, we're going to give an hour and a half, put God first, everybody's going to church. After that, we'll, every week we're going to be, come on, we're going to go through the discipleship process. I'm leading as a father in my house and everybody's going to be following because we're going to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And the third reason we don't go is we're just fearful. So this week, this week we're going. This Wednesday, we're coming together, and we're going to do a rally. Someone say rally. We're coming in here. We're going to do a prayer rally because this Saturday, this Saturday, March 12th, we as a church, and I, I need your help. We want to impact and touch as many lives as we can. We need volunteers. 9 o'clock on Saturday at Lincoln Elementary near our downtown campus. It's all on the app. I need as many of you to sign up to volunteer. We want to touch as many lives as we can. That's going to be a day that we're, going to, we're inviting our community. We're doing, we're, we're going and then we're inviting. And right now, thousands of people are already committed to come. It's not that they're, they're, they're committed to come already. We're going to love them and we're going to take care of them. And then we're going to give them the second go. We're going to preach the good news to them. Many of them are going to be set free for the first time in their life from a drug addiction, from pain, hurt, depression. Miracles are going to happen that day. Single moms are going to be coming with their pain, their hurt, and the abuse thinking that they're all alone, and they're going to find out they have a rural family here. And some of you young ladies, and some of you ladies are going to adopt them into your life. And you're going to tell them, lady, young lady, you'll never be alone again. I want you to just follow me as I follow Christ. You're going to be underneath my wing. I'm going to invest in you for the rest of your life. I'm going to be calling you, and I'm going to make sure that you succeed. We're going to mentor little boys and little girls. They're going to come in, and they've never had a father in their life. And some of the men here are going to say, look, you've never had a father. I'm going to be a father figure in your life, and I'm going to invest in you. I'll show up to your sporting events. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to bridge you to Jesus Christ. All these things are going to happen that Saturday. It's our biggest outreach. Every quarter we're doing an outreach at the church. This one is this quarter's outreach. We've prayed. We've fasted. We've, we've done everything for this outreach. Please come. Join us. But this Wednesday, let's come and let's pray together. Let's worship together. And let's get, let's get instructions for the battle. How many are ready? Come on. How many are ready to go out there and make a difference? If you've never done it, I'll tell you this. It's the most fulfilling thing you've ever do. What if we don't go? No one's going to get saved. What if we don't go? You'll never be happy or fulfilled. Because there's joy in doing what God has called you to do. Your greatest joy is not getting something. Your greatest joy is serving someone else that's hurting and broken. If you want to start experiencing some lasting joy, get involved in God's business. And if you get involved in God's business, God will begin to heal your business. Amen. Let's all stand up. Praise the Lord. Woo. I got through a lot of information there. How many receive something from God? Go. 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 Say with me. Go. 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 One more time. Go, go, go. What do we go with? The mission. What do we go with? The message. And what do we go with? The method. Invite some people. It's amazing what God could do with a little invitation. Invite people to church. Invite people to your home. To my home, yeah. Have dinner with somebody that's new. Invite them into your life. Invite them into your car. I'll take you to church. Invite them to dinner. Let's invite some people to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. If you really want to be good at this, just follow Jesus. Follow this, everything we're talking about today. Join our discipleship journey. Get involved in a group. But the first step is, how do you become a disciple of Jesus Christ, a follower of Jesus Christ? Is you make a decision to follow Jesus. You make a decision and say, God, I'm tired of doing it my way. I know I've been hard-headed, but the question is, how low can you go? Some of you guys, it's not time for you to say uncle. It's time for you to say Jesus. Say, Jesus, help me. And you know what that means? I got to let go of my pride. One of the last things that, that I had to fight through was just pride. I talked about that the other week in, in, in freedom. I had pride. And that pride would get me in fights, even as a Christian. But I finally had to just die to the pride and say, God, take over my life. 
I need some help. I want to be a man of God. I want to be loving. I want to be kind. I don't want to be jealous, mean, and angry and prideful. It was a decision I had to make. My father never made that decision. How low can you go? Well, my, my, my dad went to the ultimate low. He got in a gunfight fighting over another woman that wasn't his wife while my mom was at home. He got shot between the eyes in a gunfight. Ended up dead on a gutter. I remember visiting that gutter where my father died in front of a bar. And right before he died, he took his blood and just put a heart on the wall. I don't know what that heart represented. Maybe all the regrets that he had at that moment came alive and he started thinking about me. And he started thinking about my mom, how much abuse and pain he put her through, how much struggle he put our whole family through and leaving me alone as a five-year-old boy. Or maybe my father at the end gave his life to Jesus. I don't know. I don't know what happened those last few moments. He had time to take his own blood and put it on a wall. Today's your day. Don't let your life end that way. Give your life to Jesus. It takes a real man to make a decision. I want to follow, real, real woman to say, I want to follow Jesus. Today, we need some mothers that are godly. We need some fathers that are godly. Somebody has to make a decision. I'm going to follow Jesus. And if you produce Jesus, you're going to produce a product, a lifestyle. That your kids are going to thank you. Thank you, mama. Thank you, dad. Thank Your neighbor's going to thank you for sharing your faith with me. I'm changed. But if you're saying, pastor, I don't know right now. If I were to die, go to heaven. There's only one way to get to heaven. Let's place your faith in Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. I'm done doing it my way. And place your faith in Jesus. There's only one name to call on to be saved. It's the name of Jesus. You're not going to be saved by your works. You're going to be saved by what Jesus did. Give your life to Jesus. And when you give life to Jesus, his spirit comes inside of you and makes you a new person. It's the greatest experience that you could ever have. Brett gave his life to Jesus. Brett is in the Holy Wars 1 right now. Your life can change right now. Be transformed by your one decision away. You could accept the call or reject it. When I count to three, say, Pastor, that's me. I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I need a new life. Right now, I'm honest. I'm empty. I'm broken. I'm depressed. Something's missing. Things are falling apart. I don't know if I die right now, I go to heaven. But I want to give my life to Jesus. I want him to save me. I want to become a disciple. When I count to three, or I'm a Christian, I need to recommit myself to follow Jesus. I walked away. Today's my day to come back home. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hands. All this building saying, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want eternal life. One. When I say three, raise your hands. Two. Don't be ashamed. God's not ashamed of you. One, two, three. Raise your hands all those bills saying that's me. Proud of you, honey. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you right here. Come on. Proud of you right there. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Somebody's making a decision. I'm going to follow Jesus right there. I want those that raise their hands. I want you to do me a big favor. Will you give me the honor of praying with you? I want you to leave your seat and I want you to come up here. What we're going to do is pray with you and welcome you into God's family. This is your first step, leaving your old life in those seats and starting to live a new life with Christ. If you raise your hand, come forward. Ask your neighbor. If you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Let's give them a hand as they're coming online. If you gave your life to Jesus, raise your hand there. Get ready. We're going to pray with you. Stand up at home. Come on, church. Let's give them a hand. Someone's giving their life to Jesus. Someone's becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. Someone's family being changed. Someone's getting set free. Results are changing. Families are changing. Marriages are changing. Someone is following, his name is written in the last book of life today. Someone's going to get set free from a drug addiction. Someone's going to become a brand new man. Come on, someone's going to become a brand new woman. It's going to start right now. You're one decision away. It takes a real man to live this life. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a hand. So let's do that. Your next step. We're going to pray right now. 
your next step to get baptized. He just said, me and my wife want to get baptized next Sunday. Well, let's do this. Follow through. They draw holy warriors. Stop focusing on symptoms and start changing your life. Let's do this. I ain't playing. I love you guys. I'm fighting for you guys. And I'm not going to water down the standards because you could live a higher life. But it's a decision, one decision away. God can help you. Proud of you. Let's bow our heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. There's a prayer before God. Today you're going to be saved. Today you're going to be forgiven. Today you're going to be set free. Today you're going to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved right now from judgment, from sin, from addiction. It's changing right now. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And I'm asking you now to save me from judgment, from addiction, and from the lifestyle I've been living apart from you. I'm tired of passing this on to the people I love. I need a new life. I believe you died on a cross. You suffered for all my sins so that I could be forgiven, set free, and be born again. Jesus, save me. I believe you rose from the dead. You are alive. I open my heart and ask you, Jesus, come in and be the Lord of my life. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. And devil, I command you now, get out of my mind, get out of my body, get out of my family. Jesus is my Lord from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, church. Love you guys. This Wednesday night, let's come a rally time. If you need prayer, stay right here. We're going to pray with you. If you just gave your life to Jesus, first step. Next step, get baptized. Next step, join Holy Warriors. Next step, join a Power 12 discipleship group. Let's keep growing. We love you.